it's always nice when you can park your van right outside the customer's house. So we've just got here this morning, just waiting for the customer to leave. What we're doing here is a full heating system flush because uh, I'll take you up now and show you the boiler. We've got a Weizmann boiler that's only been in, it's been in two or three years or so, but they've been having a problem with um, hot water or the heat inside of it. I'm not 100% sure what it was, but service engineer came out, changed the heat exchanger in it and advised them to get a system flush. So they gave me a ring. We've got the Magna Cleanse unit. We're gonna connect into that Fernox filter. You need an adapter to do that with a Magna Cleanse. I'll show you that shortly. And also what they wanted was that TRV was playing up. So we swapped the TRV and lock shield on there. I'm saying again here, that one's playing up. So we're gonna swap them two there. That we know everything is working fine. Then we can get the Magna Cleanse connected in and begin the flushing process. That's them two rad valves changed. We're ready now to fit the Magna Cleanse unit onto the heating. Well, the Magna Cleanse units or the filter units, this is a Fernox one, always goes on the return pipe back to the boiler so that all the crap that's going into the boiler gets caught in here before it goes in. The Magna Cleanse unit couples in easy enough when you've got a Magna Clean unit fitted onto the pipe work. So these two fittings replicate what you have in the Magna Cleanse unit and all you do then is just take the Magna Cleanse off and push them on. Easy enough. Whereas this one, because this is the Fernox one, it's a bit of a pain really because you the, there's no way of isolating this unit. You, so you've got to drain the heating down before you can take this off. So we've drained it down to do them two rad valves anyway, but what we'll do now is undo this bolt, undo this nut at the back here like so, and this will just lift out, take this off, like so. So now we've got that off, that should flow coming in, or your return coming into your unit, and then it goes back through the outside of it. It's a bit of a strange design. But anyway, this is a, a unit that fits in place. So we'll pop that on, screw that into position, and then we've basically got to get from this onto the fittings that would usually house the Magna Clean. So, we have one of them, that fits onto there. And then another one, that fits onto that side. Because we've got to get from that Fernox adapter to, in essence, the Magna Cleanse adapter, the only way I've figured out, unless anyone knows any different, is by going 22 mil into there, and then 20 foot and the end of that 22 mil plastic into there. It's a bit of a faff, and it's just more pipe work everywhere. Either Fernox need to make a different adapter, or what would get around it is if Magna Cleanse made that, but there's a grub screw in the end of there. I've took that out, and there's a pin, but you can't get that pin out to separate them two arms. So that's the only way I've found of doing it. So we've got that first one in there. We'll get the second one connected from the bottom into this side and then we can start filling the system back up. We'll run it through here, check the valves are okay. I'll run the system up and see where we're at. So that's them connected now. Do you see what I mean though? It just becomes a massive big faff. Admittedly, there's not a lot of room in here where I can get onto the filter, but you know, apart from that, it's just a pain in the ass. So what we'll do now, we'll turn all the valves off, turn the drain off off that's down there, fill the system back up, Pop some cleaner inside. Well, we'll go for the first one we'll go for is the we'll put the power cleaner in as well and then run it up and start moving some stuff around the system. So just pop that into the first tub, like so. Pop the magnet back in. So they're perfectly clean, so we'll see what they're like at the end of the day and how they're looking. So we're ready to go. I'll refix the fill in loop and then we should repressurize the system up and get it turned on. Open these up as well. 
we'll go around and vent some rads. So that's everything connected here. We've just fired the heating up, so we're going to go around now and just see what is going on with the rads heat wise. It's just got the system cleaner in it. Yeah, as you can see, it's coming in on the right hand side now at, let's have a look, 41 degrees. It's coming in, and the return is 18. So you'll see that now, as you can see, the heat's going around the top there. But we'll see it slowly build up on them rads. Let's have a look at this one. Yeah, you can see the heat coming in there. But what I'll do, I'll let it get warm for a while, and then, uh, yeah, there we go. But you can see, see the cold spots at the bottom? So we are at the top, it, it is, this one is 21 degrees, and at the bottom, 14 degrees. Let the system run for half an hour or so, get it right up to temperature. We can go around and see exactly what the rads are saying. Like this one. This one you can just see the heat coming in at that bottom corner. And the rest of the rad is completely cold. So we'll let the heating warm up, we'll get all the rads warm and we'll go around and see what's what. So I don't know if you can pick that up, but as you look at these two 22 mil plastic pipes, you can see the one on the right is a lot hotter. And then these two coming in here, I don't know if you can make it out, but the one on the right, the one going in the bottom, which is the return back to the boiler, is becoming hot. And so is the, the outlet of it. So it's basically coming in here before it gets to the boiler. This is the inline filter that we've taken out in effect so it's coming in here so we're getting all the crap from the system coming through here i've seen a few big chunks of uh magnetized and iron oxide coming through here so these two pots will catch it and then it's coming out of this side in effect straight up into the boiler and then obviously circling circulating round. but it, yeah it's doing what we want it to do at the minute so this rad here was the one that they were sort of most concerned about it was never very hot at all put your hand on it and you know just give off no heat at all so this is just the first pass through with the cleaner and we are now seeing let me see what we're reading at the top 48 50 degrees at the top the bottom's reading what are we on 23 24 degrees so yeah heat's definitely coming through that one a lot more now that's the first pass that's just with the the power flush system cleaner we've got the uh, sludge remover to go in we've still got the uh, cleaner to go in, sludge remover to go in, and everything else, and then the inhibitor at the end. So that is going to be a bit of a shock to my heart, it's going to get, I think. So what we'll try, just to see if there's a little bit of uh, iron oxide or magnetise or, or iron filings on the bottom of here, we'll put the agitator onto the end of the SDS drill, pop it onto chisel, which it is, and what I always do is just put a little towel over the end of it, so that when we rattle the bottom of here, you're not going to damage any of the rad or mark the rad at all. I'll show you exactly what we do. So this just moves in and out quite quick, and it will just rattle the bottom of the rad. It doesn't need a lot to do it. And what that'll do is just release a little bit of the iron oxide at the bottom. Let's just have a look and see if it's done out. So we've just still got that little bit of cold along the bottom. The top's lovely and hot. But just along the bottom, we just see, we might give that another pass through and just see how it releases it up. Right, we just that quick pass over that rad. We've lost the actual cold spots at the bottom of it now. Temperature's really lifting on that rad. So we'll just leave that one on. What I'm gonna do is go and shut the rest of the rads off force a bit more heat into this one and just leave it running through this one for a little while but that certainly made a huge difference on that one and that's just stage one so the system has been on for a good two two and a half three hours maybe 
So what I'm going to do is drain the system through this rad because um, this one's just struggling to get a little bit of heat. So we'll drain it down through here and I'll also drain it off that one going outside with it. So we'll go up, vent all the radiators, boilers off, vent rads, just drain everything from the top half of the system and then we can get some the sludge remover in. So we've now put the sludge remover in, we opened the, open the hose up, drained all the water out, flushed it through, opened the pot up, put some sludge remover in there, put it back on, repressurise the system and we'll fire it back up again and leave that running for a, an hour or so to get rid of the bits of sludge that are in it. Right, we're a good few hours in now. Um, I've just, I'm just topping that up. I'm going to leave that filling loop open. So that's constantly going to fill because I've got the hose open down here. And it's flushing out the whole system. Right, now we've flushed that system through, got a load of cold water through it. Put the system cleaner in it now. Straight into this pot. Get this back on. And then we we'll shut the drain off down there, refill the system and then just flush system cleaner through it for an hour, hour and a half, flush that out, clean the system completely through each individual radiator and then we can get the inhibitor in and leave the system running. I mean at the minute it's red hot in here, all the rads are getting perfectly hot so the system is definitely running a lot better, a lot more efficient which is exactly what we want. Right, so we've had the heating on now for probably two hours, two and a half hours with the system cleaner in it. So what we're going to do now is turn the boiler off, let that cool down, then flush each rad out. So how we're going to do this is the hose is connected to the end of the magnet cleanse unit. What we'll do, shut every single radiator off, open this up, turn the um, filling loop on so that the water is consistently pumping round with this open and then open each rad individually and flush each rad. Once that's done, shut that one off, move to the next one, open it up, do that for all the rads. And then we know all of them are completely flushed out. We can then disconnect this unit, put the Fernox filter back on. And what I'm gonna do is pop this cap out the top of this towel rail and put two liters of inhibitor into there. And then that is the system. There we go. And that is the system completely cleaned off and done. And we can also have a look. I don't think there's going to be, I've had these pots open a few times, I had the magnet out. I don't think there's going to be that much in there, but you can feel the actual core temperature of the house has lifted up. It's bloody hot in here. So each rad as well is getting just red hot. Whereas before a few of them weren't really getting hot. This one wasn't really getting hot at all. That one was struggling. That one's bang on now. So yeah, we'll begin flushing this through now. I've put the Fernox filter back on and I've opened up filling loop and then we'll go downstairs and I'll show you I've got the hose connected so it's just flushing through the heating system so it's just coming out there so we're just flushing that through but what I'm going to do now is take off these I don't I don't expect there to be much in it to be honest but you never know there's a little bit little little, little lump at the top There's a fair bit, I suppose. I've seen it worse, I've seen it massive, but any is better than nothing. So we'll get this packed away now and then we'll finish flushing it through and then I can add the inhibitor at the end, run it up, balance it all out and we're good to go. So that's the system completely flushed through. As I said, we've reconnected that. We've shut the drain off, off downstairs and it's just now time to add the corrosion inhibitor. I'll pop the bung out the top of the towel rail. So I'm gonna put two liters of it in there Put that back on, refill the system, fire it up, get it heat tested, and then balance the rads. While well, I have a tidy up, balance the rads and uh, get it all nice and warm. Then we'll go around with the thermal imaging, make sure all the rads are spot on. So we're all tidied away now, packed away, cleaned up, but, and all I'm doing now is going around and balancing the rads. 
So like this rad is pretty uniform heat everywhere and it's really, really hot. So it's 70 degrees on the top, full. So what I've done is took the lock shield off, cranked that down shut, closed, and then opened it one turn. And the same with a couple of others, the same with this one. This one was really hot as well. It's probably altered a little bit now because I've balanced it out. But this one was throwing out plenty of heat. So we've left the thermostat on full, turned the lock shield right down and then one turn open. And the same with this one as well. This was the same. So then it's going to push the heat over to the ones that need it a little bit more. This one's okay. I'll balance this one. This one could go down a little bit more actually. As you can see, perfectly. The heat in it is perfect. So we can just balance that one down a little bit more just to push a bit more heat into this one here. This is the one that they originally had a bit of an issue with, but now all the rads are on. It's just starting to balance the heat through this one now. So I'm just going to go around and tweak the rest of them. Like this towel rail, again, like I said earlier, it's chrome, so you can't really tell, but what we'll do, we just open that up. Like this towel rail, we'll just open it up a little bit. Just to get a little bit of heat to that one. It doesn't need to be red hot in there. It's just a little small room, just to take the edge off the towels. This one is the one where we want the heat at. And that's it, I've spent the last sort of hour now balancing the system out. And as you can see, really uniform heat on these radiators now. So there's that one. This is the customer's office rad. I've turned this down slightly because be being an old panel rad, it just convects the heat straight out the front. But that one's really good. And then in here, this one's really even. This one had sort of real bad cold spots all over it. This one's perfect now. We've got a couple downstairs. We've got, just turn this down. We've got the hallway one. That's lovely and radiating plenty of heat on that one. And the two decorative ones in the lounge is really even. I'm really impressed with those. They had a couple of bars in them weren't really coming warm. But they're working a treat now. And this one had one bar that was sort of struggling to get heat through. And now that's really even. Perfectly even. And then the one that the customer was really struggling with was this one. It was, you know, lukewarm to touch. Now it's uh, chucking plenty out. I'm really impressed with that one. I'm really pleased we managed to pull that cold spot out the bottom and get that done. And then, as I said earlier, the chrome one, we can't really see because chrome obviously reflects heat. And then the last one is that one. We've got a random red hot panel in this one. And I can't, I've done everything. I've shut everything down to try and force heat into that one. And it just seems to be a rogue panel. But it's coming nice and hot anyway. Nice and even heat bar for that, that red hot one. But yeah. And there's that one. So yeah, we spent the last hour just balancing it all down, getting it all finished off. Customer's really happy. Adam, he's just got back, really happy with it. Especially that one in the, in the far end of the kitchen that has never really got hot, now it's red hot. So yeah, happy customer. Yeah.